what's happening we are going to make the perfect steak right now pan seared oven baked steak you can do the searing and then eat the steak or you can do the pan sear to the oven bake trust me you're going to do all the steps here you're going to do the pan sear and the oven bake let's get into it right now now what you're going to be seeing in the video is two gigantic steaks the ones that say that are best for barbecue and now for the purpose of this video i picked these big steaks so you can see everything that i'm doing to it and the way that i'm seasoning it so we're going to be starting off with the garlic salt the garlic salt is going to be paramount in this whole thing even though we're still adding garlic later we're going to be doing the cavender's all-purpose greek seasoning i love this stuff the onion powder do not do onion salt it's going to come out way too salty onion powder is a must and the montreal steak seasoning is key in the whole thing everything that comes into montreal steak seasoning you're gonna want this on your steak it's gonna create that crust now the carry gold butter burns real real fast really really fast so if you want to use country crock use country crock it burns a bit better it's used for more all-purpose we're gonna go with the white onion you can do the yellow onion but the white onion I had on hand so I picked that and the garlic cloves you're gonna need three garlic cloves you can use the minced garlic if you want to but that's a whole nother process I'll tell you about later but I'm not gonna show in this video three garlic cloves now you're gonna season this the way that I'm season it you're gonna layer on the garlic salt first right and then you're gonna want to do the montreal steak seasoning the onion powder to the cavenders and all of this then you're not gonna want to miss a beat you're gonna want to season those sides and get all that on both sides you're gonna do this on both sides of the steak wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute now i know you're looking at my steak and you're thinking oh my god this thing is like over seasoned but the perfect steak does come with salt and pepper now I don't know if you ever been to a restaurant and then they have the A1 sauce sitting on the side. People go ahead and they reach for it because they want more flavor. And this is what is I'm bringing to the steak. It's all that flavor with the garlic salt, the onion powder, the Greek seasoning. All that comes in one, right? You're going to want all that flavor locked in. Now you're going to go ahead and take your onions here and you're going to want to slice them into the wheels because you're going to want to slice these like half ways when you're done with that. You're going to take your garlic, your three garlic cloves, and you're going to end up pressing them and you're going to end up peeling off that that layer that the garlic has on the sides of it and you're going to want to slice that into slivers because we're going to be utilizing that later now i didn't have a good cameraman with me at this time so uh, uh please excuse the angles that i got here but i'm telling you i'm taking the garlic and i'm slicing it into slivers after i press it and peel off that outer shell we're gonna want it into those slivers so we're gonna add it into the butter that you're gonna see later on in the video along with the onions i'm telling you i'm slicing these onions into the wheels so i can slice them in half so i can put them into the pan you can keep them in the wheels but slice them in half go to your oven and go ahead and start this process now preheat that to 400 degrees 400 degrees is where you're going to want to be at for this steak now once we are done with all that with the preheating of the oven we're going to get our pan really, really hot in this video i had the pan just a little too high so a medium high heat is probably where you're going to want to be at so i sprayed the pan with ham right say that three times fast and then i'm going to add in my butter you're going to want to have like a stick nearby like a stick of butter you're going to be chopping that thing off you're going to be putting it inside of the pan you see it smoking you see that i got a little too high don't worry about that you want your pan hot because we're going to cook the outside fast i want to say i'm not a professional chef anymore. i'm just showing you how i'm cooking i want to say that's called like flash searing or something like that i know it's just called searing but cooking it this fast on the outside i want to say it's called like flash searing so you're going to want to add in that butter on both sides of the steak because depending on how you got your whole thing set up you want that butter evenly distributed on both sides you want that to break down and start cooking that steak now this is time elapsed this is a little bit sped up you see that i'm moving a little bit fast but this whole process here of cooking the steak and putting everything in there all this is going to take roughly about seven minutes and if you want your steak rare you're gonna see the outside cooked to perfect with the crust, with the Montreal season, everything we have on there. If you was to take it out of the pan, after you flip it, you're gonna have a rare steak. We're looking for a medium rare steak. That is our end product here. So we add in the onions that I told you that I took that was a wheel and I sliced them in half so we can sprinkle it into the butter. We're gonna sprinkle those garlic slivers into the butter and we're gonna have toasted garlic. And then we're gonna flip it. One of the big things about cooking steak that people don't like to do is you gotta touch the pan. You're gonna have to grab that handle and you're gonna have to pick it up. You're gonna have to lean it over. And you're gonna have to base the steak. You're gonna have to put that butter back on top. Cause what just happened was is that you flipped it, it came out of the heat, it's trying to cool itself down. You wanna keep that temperature up 
you're putting that butter back on the steak, putting the flavor back into your meat. Now, look at the overall way that you got it. You want the, the onion still back in the butter. You want to take it off the steak. You're just really monitoring it to make sure that everything is reducing and cooking the way that you want it. So all those flavors lock together for your steak. Now, if you want your steak rare, this is going to be the final product for you. You're going to take it off of the stove. You're going to be taking it, sitting it on the plate. You're going to take your caramelized onions. You're going to take your toasted garlic. You're going to sit that on the plate. You're going to let it rest for 10 minutes. Most people do not let their steak rest for 10 minutes because you're going to want that meat to lock in the juices. So when you reheat it, you don't have a tire. You have all the work and effort you put into it. Now, I almost lost my steak here, so I'm glad that that did not happen. Transfer that to your baking pan. You're not going to want to stir it with Pam or anything like that because you're going to take those juices, the onions and the toasted garlic and the second steak, you're going to put that, all these chunk of steaks and you're going to put that inside that baking dish. Now you're also gonna be taking those residual butter and the onions and the toasted garlic and you're gonna pour that on top of your steaks. Now if you have a side that is more cooked than the other side, you're gonna put that down because the butter and all that's gonna be on the bottom. So when you end up putting it in the oven on the medium rack in the middle of the oven, right? The middle rack in the middle of the oven. And you're gonna set your timer for seven minutes. Seven minutes, no longer than that. Not even if you want a well-done steak. If you wanted a well-done steak, you had to do something different. You're gonna have to cook it at a lower temperature when it was in the pan. So this is a medium rare steak. All the, the onions and the garlic, all that is cooked, locked into the steak. Now that I took it out of the oven, this is the process where I'm gonna take it, sit it on a plate, and I'm gonna let that rest for 10 minutes so all the juices can lock in. I'll put those onions to the side because I'm not really gonna eat those. And this comes out buttery smooth. You could probably cut this with a fork. When you reheat it again, like I said, it's gonna come out and you're not gonna have a tire. If you do want to store this later, you're gonna wanna slice it up and re-sear those sides to lock in that flavor, keeping your medium rare steak. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.